coming up on The Joe Schmo Show. How is he going to react? Is he going to be pissed at us because we deceived him? Or is he going to be happy? Or is he, he going to cry? We really didn't know how he was going to react. Someone is looking down on me. Who did this? Listen, calm down. I am not doing yes, soft core do porn. Matt just fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I want to ride with you to the end. Right now, it really hit Matt hard. What is going on? What would you do if your entire world turned out to be fake? If an army of writers, producers, and actors spent over a year creating TV's most elaborate experiment around you. If they plotted your every move, recorded it 24 hours a day, and put it on national television. Well, that's exactly what happened to this guy. Meet Matt Kennedy Gould, one real guy competing for $100,000 on a reality show that he doesn't know is fake. Starring nine actors. Melissa Yvonne Lewis as Ashley, the rich bitch. David Hornsby as Hutch, the asshole. Angela Dodson as Molly, the virgin. Franklin Jones as Earl, the veteran. Nikki Davis as Gina, the schemer. Lance Crawl as Kip, the gay guy. Brian Keith Etheridge as Brian, the buddy. Kristen Wiig as Dr. Pat, the quack. And me, Ralph Garman, as the smarmy host. All performing for the one guy who thinks it's real. This place is fucking starting to drive me crazy. This is the Joe Schmo Show. So the very first thing will be to have you guys file in. While our nine actors rehearsed in Los Angeles, we set out on a nationwide search for the star of the Joe Schmo Show. We saw thousands of potential men until we finally found our Joe Schmo, a regular guy named Matt Kennedy Gould. <laughs> Are you a pretty confident guy? I mean, on the outside. I struggle like the rest of us on the inside, though. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was born with good social graces, so they tend to lend themselves to confidence, but really, you know, I'm just fighting like everyone else. Matt had recently dropped out of law school and moved into his parents' house in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He was spending his weekends delivering pizza and playing basketball. When we offered him the chance to come on a show called Lap of Luxury, he said he was ready. But who could possibly be ready for this? It's day one. The director is prepping the actors while they wait for Matt's arrival. First of all, welcome to the big experiment. I am really excited about this. Uh, it's your first day. Let the silences, let those awkward moments play. Okay. We want to hear from Matt. Let him start conversation. You guys are so talented, and you've got your characters down now that you're going to want to, minute one, get all that info out there. Take your time. Can I add something really quickly? Yeah. Just remember, this is a marathon and not a sprint. So first day, real, real, real. We're going to get him hook, line, and sinker, and we can afford to get outrageous later. So it's just, just keep that in mind. Marathon, not sprint. Yes. Good show, everybody. The actors are ready as Matt finally makes his entrance. Wow. <laughs> Pretty pimp, huh? I didn't know I was going to be the first person arriving. I just kept thinking, you know, what am I getting myself into? Like, should I pop the door right now and bolt? Thank you. When I got out of the limo, I was much more nervous than I thought I was going to be. And it was so nice to finally put a face and a body with the name. I'm Dr. Pat. My name's Matt. Nice to meet Matt. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, nice too. Nice to stand over here. Oh, yeah. my gosh, look at this place. So we drove up and got out and seen Matt, and he looked like a big goober standing there. Hi, I'm Earl Bradford. Nice to meet you, Earl. Nice to meet you, Matt. All right. Well, when I first met Earl, he came up to me with a, and I said, hey, you know, my name's Matt, like in my normal voice, and he looked me right square in the eye and went, Earl Bradford. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like, I see we're going to have to take things a little light with you. My initial reaction was, uh, this looks like the all-American guy, definitely. Hi. How you doing, man? Matt. Hey, Kip, K-I-P? Yes. Sweet. Kip, he's, uh, okay, he's a little bit eccentric, which I'm totally cool with. Where are you from, Kip? I'm from Atlanta. The dirty, dirty? 
you know what they call Atlanta? Dirty, dirty. <laughs> I know the dirty bird. You know, like the Falcons or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That. Thank you, sir. I'm sure Matt was nervous. When I pulled up, I saw him fidgeting, rubbing his hands together. And I'm thinking, you think you're nervous? Try being in my shoes, pal. Oh my god, it's like all guys. What's up, man? What's, What's up, up? Dude? Hey. I'm like, okay, here we go. I mean, when else do you get to be in character almost 24 hours a day? And it's kind of a fantasy. So where are you from, Hutch? Houston, Texas. You like the Texans? Yeah, they're all right. I'm kind of an Oilers fan, really. When he started talking sports about sports to me about Houston, I'm like, quick, think of all the sports stuff I know, which is like this much. Like, Remember Doug Drabeck? Doug Drabeck. Uh, the old pirate pitcher. And he's like, oh yeah, what about that uh, pitcher so and so? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, it's, uh, he's from Pittsburgh. And I was like, is he trying to trick me here? Like every question, I thought he was kind of testing me. Oh Did you ever go to yeah. Austin or anything? I don't, I don't fucking have a lot of time to travel. Yeah, what do you do for a living? Uh, cop. Oh, are you really? In the limo, my stomach was just doing flip-flops. But I think my biggest fear the whole time was that I was going to be the one to, to, you know, blow the secret. Hey, my name is Matt. I'm sorry, That's Molly. all right. Nice to meet you, Molly. First impression of Molly was built nice. <laughs> I mean, that was... What I immediately thought, I thought, wow, I'm like a hot blonde girl, you know? Another one. Another person? Right before the whole game began and we were driving up in the limo, that's when all of my nervousness as an actor um, sort of surged to the surface. <laughs> Hi. What's up? How you doing? Hi. Gina, she's, she's quite sexy too. And I have no problems, you know, with uh, hooking up with other races or anything like that. It's a cool place. <laughs> Back okay? <laughs> I arrived last and the limo pulled up and I didn't want to stare at him because you know, we all get out and we're like so I just tried to look at look the house and check everything out in a very Ashley sort of way. Ashley, Matt, Hi. nice to meet you. Of anyone here, I'd, I'd like to get to know her. <laughs> I mean, as female wise. Kip, are you about to comment that you like that. Ashley's bag? I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Kip, you're gay, huh? <laughs> Can I see this? Huh? Yeah. He looked at me like, yeah, I'm gay, so what? You know what I mean? Which, he's right. Why the heck, Why would I have said that? What was the giveaway? It matter. Well, that he commented on he liked her shirt and then he liked her bag. and <laughs> Not that I care. It doesn't matter. Oh, my goodness. Ralph in his full outfit on the horse. You know, I think Matt was just kind of like, what in the world have I gotten myself into? Whoa, Mickey. I had to just stand there and I wasn't talking. And so everyone's staring at me and I'm staring back at them and the horse is staring at them and they're staring at the horse and no one was saying anything. Ralph the host, I was thinking like, God, this guy's a little bit of a tool at first, the way he was just stiff and stern, you know? Welcome to the lap of luxury. I'm your host, Ralph Garman. Woo! So I look at you now, I don't see nine scared strangers. I see nine bold, adventurous explorers. But only one of you will complete this journey. It won't be easy. You're gonna have to outdo, outshine, and outperform your opponents. But first, take a good look around. Some of you may end up friends. Some of you may end up enemies. But in the end, you'll all be part of a very elite community. People who have lived in the lap of luxury. Woo! Yeah. Now you're gonna be entering the house in randomly selected groups. The people you go in with are the very same people you'll be sharing a bedroom with. The first group to enter the lap of luxury mansion is Ashley, Gina and Molly. The next group is Kip, Brian, and Hutch. Let's pick a good room for both. Yeah, yeah. So I hope there's three beds. Uh, there better be. <laughs> and the third and final group to enter the lap of luxury mansion is Earl, Matt, and Patricia. It's Dr. Pat. 
Dr. Pat. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. Well, here, I'll just carry yours and come back. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> it was set up that Matt and I were to share a bed along with Earl, and he, and he seemed to buy it. He's like, oh, yeah, he's like, that's great, that's cool. Well, there's nothing we can do about it, so. We could have some fun when we go to sleep. <laughs> okay. Okay. Honey, Earl, I'm that. just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm here with an ex marine psycho and some marriage counselor who's been married three times, and I'm sleeping in a bed with them. <laughs> This is our room. That's not bad. That's not bad it's not at too all. Bad, you know. When we were all standing in the um, in the original lineup, he looked back and he said something about Kip being gay. Hey, Kip, you're gay, huh? Can I see this? Huh? Yeah, he outed Kip. He was like, "You're gay, right?" <laughs> and which you know we hope would come out naturally, but he just he's like doing beats for us. He's like he's progressing the story for us. Hey, dude, I wanted to say, when I said you're gay before, don't get pissed. I think Matt definitely felt bad. I mean, you could tell Matt was just really sincere when he, when he said it. Just so you know, I'm an ally, bro. I don't... Oh, that's, I that's just, fine. That's fine. I was just, you know, it's like you never know when you Dude, yeah, in. I'm an ally. Just so you know that, for okay. real. All right? Okay, great. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you very much for saying that, too. You know, yeah, you man. Know how to do that. Yeah. You know, also, I already, like, forgot about it. When that. I said that, like, I was like, dude, he's going to think I'm an asshole, but... And the way you looked at me, you know, but the reality of it is, is I'm, I'm down with it. You okay, know what I mean? That's fine. Cool. You know, I was just a little, you know, just cool. a little Yeah, nervous. I know, I know. Okay. But I really think that he appreciated me, me talking with him, and uh, we're golden now. It was a great, perfect introduction for him and me. It's it was good. I think we bonded, you know. I hope you don't uh, punch me in the face when you find out that your gay friend is not gay. Next on the Joe Schmo Show. This design is great for any activity. Who would have thought putting on Molly's underwear would be fun? And later, ready, set, touch that hooker. Brian Keith Etheridge did double duty on the show, both acting and writing. The first game of the show should be something that eases us into um, the humiliation factor. All righty. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. What's up? You're all getting the royal treatment here on Lap of Luxury. But as your stay here in the mansion goes on, you're also going to be competing for a little extra pampering. Up for grabs today, the opportunity to sleep alone in your very own master suite. That's, the, one, that's, the, that's the bedroom upstairs you've all seen and have been talking about. Now before you enter the mansion, we asked each of you to donate a pair of your underwear. Uh -huh. And it's not because we're sick and twisted. It's for a little something we like to call, these drawers aren't yours. Your job, match the underwear to its owner. Now the person with the most correct answers wins sole use of that master suite. The person with the least number of correct answers, well they have to wear the winner's underwear for the rest of the day. Now let's get this fashion show started. Every game is rigged so that the story goes as planned. Yeah! Wow. Yes! Oh, you can prowl the night freely in these boxer briefs. The camouflage design is perfect for evading double agents. Which one of you scopes out the opposite sex in these? Yes. Lovely. Number two! <laughs> A pessimist would say this pair is half finished. While an optimist would say they're just right. The crotchless feature provides easy access for the owner and or their significant other. Who owns these wide open wonders? <laughs> Number three. Lose track when you're wearing uh, crotch. Yeah. Pack up your bait in these fabulous boxers. The catchy design is sure to reel in the action. What fish lover keeps their rod in this tackle box? I think that Molly should be proud of her body because I am, you know? <laughs> nice. Number three. Woo! Working. I should have brought my rod and reel. Oh, and, uh, Earl, <laughs> your turn, my friend. Yes! The women's underwear I was assigned to wear was a uh, 
leopard skin mini thong. It's really? in my ass. It's like butt floss. Yeah. I'm thinking this is uncool. And I gotta take a robe off and walk down this runway. You gotta be kidding me. I wasn't sure how everyone was going to take it, you know, Earl being so stern. I mean, that's just amazing to see a guy like this guy's marine through and through. Who's the tiger among us? What number? What number is that? That's number four. Okay. Dr. Pat. Underwear number five. It's not the size of the elf, ladies, it's the magic. These boxers are the gift to keep on giving. They keep your jingle jangling, especially for that ho, ho, ho occasion. Brian, number six. For the avid cat lover, this animal print G-string is perfect. The breathable fabric provides a comfortable fit and the finest fashion. I'm not saying that I felt exploited uh, per se, but I will say this. They needed beefcake, I provided beefcake. Can you guess which sex kitten owns them? Dear Lord. Yeah, no, 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 no. Thanks for no. that. The worst thing, absolutely the worst thing was seeing Brian in that G-string. Uh, he had like, he looked like he had like moldy ham. like. <laughs> Poorly taped to his ass. <laughs> his ass is so bad. All right, Matt, you're up. Come on, Matt. Oh, the energy MMA up. to the double T. Go, Underwear number seven. Like I felt a little weird. I was, I was worrying about size down there a little bit. You know, I didn't want to, you know, look all small on TV. <laughs> so I tried to tug on him. No. <laughs> no, I did play with it a little bit though to get the size up. Reading a book or watching oh TV, goodness. this design is great for any activity. Matt gets up there, oh my gosh, like he's in. Like he's really gonna play this. He's gonna play every single game. Like then there was no doubt in our mind that anything that had been written, he was gonna do. The seamless tummy contour panel provides maximum support and a sleek silhouette. Killer job, man. Woo! Killer, bro. All right, Ashley, it's your turn. I've been waiting for this, Ashley. Yes. Call the doctor, because here comes a heart stopper. The breathable cotton will keep you cool, but it will give your partner the fever. It gives me yeah. fever. Which hottie owns this steamy number? Work it. Wow. Woo. Let's get a couple shakes up there. Ashley, thank the Lord, got to wear a cute little black underwear, which, you know, made my day. And probably, I mean, my week and month. And, Maybe a year. <laughs> Come on, work it. Do it for some. Thank you, Ashley. You're amazing. And number nine, lastly, Kip. <laughs> Come on, Kip, baby, work it. Kip, Kip. This is the style for you. The natural approach is a classic. No underwear at all provides free ball and freedom. Work it, you sexy bitch! Yeah. All right, everybody, finish up your voting. I'm going to collect your ballots. And then I will return with the results shortly. Next on The Joe Schmo Show. Yeah, I blew it. I blew it the first day within the first two hours. Like everything on the Joe Schmo Show, these drawers aren't yours was rigged in advance. The plan was for Matt to lose. He actually matched so many pairs of underwear correctly, we had to scramble to change the answers. Now, the actors need to listen carefully as I reveal the new results. All right, everybody, we have tabulated your ballots and I have the answers right here. Yes. It's now time to reveal which underwear belongs to which owner, okay? Underwear number one, the camouflage print boxer briefs belong to Brian. Yeah. Underwear number two, the crotchless panties belong to Gina. Underwear number three, Earl is actually the real owner of the fish boxers. <laughs> now underwear number four, the animal print thong belongs to Ashley. <laughs> Woo! Underwear Matt. number five, the Christmas elf boxers. Those are Matt's. <laughs> nice, oh, Matt. Underwear number six, our second set of animal print underwear. 
That pair belongs to Kip. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I knew it. I, you can How keep, do you wear you these? You can keep those. You can have them. Well. Underwear number seven. Those actually belong to Molly. Uh, uh huh. I think I screwed that up. Who would have thought putting on Molly's underwear would be fun? I mean, but it is very freeing. There's no way those panties would have ever fit on Molly. But they were black and huge. And I didn't find out until we were playing the game. You know, Matt, you're wearing Molly's panties. And I think I got this look on my face. I was like, yes. I was like, OK, I almost screwed up because I didn't know what was going on. I pulled an idiot like, move. I, uh, I got to start getting my head in the game. Underwear number eight that Ashley is wearing belonged to Dr. Pat. Really? Now, most of you got that wrong. I guess people don't expect doctors to wear a cute little underwear like that. Number nine. No underwear at all? That would have to be Hutch. Hutch is footloose and uh, swinging free. I like free balling, boo. That's uh, a disturbing uh, thought for all of us, I'm sure. OK, you don't shout. That means that the winner, with a final score of seven out of nine, is Kip. Oh, Congratulations, oh, Kip. Uh, because you're going to be moving into that glorious master suite. While you're packing, pull out an extra pair of underwear. Because the person with the least number of correct answers has to wear your underwear for the rest of the day. Oh, no. And that's Matt. Oh, Matt will be wearing oh, Kip's underwear for the rest oh, of the day. Yeah. Here, let me just give you these. I have no idea how Kip got seven out of nine. You know, no idea. I think I got two. That's it, everybody. Thanks so much for playing. These drawers aren't yours. Does everybody want to go see what kind of underwear I'm going to put Matt in? Yeah. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> when Matt was giving Kip's underwear, he uh, he was just a good sport about it. You know, he's like, okay, you know, that's not exactly what I want to wear all night long, but you know, he's his game. He's real game for anything, which is which is perfect for this uh, little scenario that we're so evilly placing upon him. Alright, let's give Matt a hand. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm a good sport, you know, whatever. Wear the guy's thong. But wearing it was uncomfortable. It was up, you know, in the crack. I guess that's the point of it. So what'd you think of the first game? I thought yours were the fishing ones. You did? Yeah. With all the rivers and the woods and stuff in Pennsylvania, I thought, yeah. And she, they had to tape up the waist on her. I knew I nailed that one. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Wait, which ones did you think were The fishing. Those were yours. Those were yours. He just went white. I mean, he knew that he just kind of blew it, and there was this awkward silence. Yeah, I blew it. I blew it the first day within the first two hours. Yeah, weren't they? Yeah. The ones with the fish? The, uh, I had just totally forgotten that the underwear I was the, the, were mine. Earl is actually the real owner of the fish boxers. Green? No. Yeah, the green ones with the. Uh, Yours was the one, the blue ones with the fish. fish. Yours were the fishing ones. No, no, no. You're no, mixing no. up the Santa with the fishes. You're thinking the Santa ones had fish. Well, I don't have them. my contacts or glasses in. Those weren't fish. No, they no, were no, 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 no. hats. You had the you had the blue one with the big fish in the front. We we fixed it, but it was. It didn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm surprised that he fell for it. I thought the ones you had on had the fish. No, they were little Santas. It was green. Maybe you thought that's why they were fish? Uh, oh, that's it. That's not fair. You need to wear your glasses that's and it. everything. <laughs> there we yeah, go. There's no reason not no, to wear them. There's no I can't, reason. I can't. Uh, Did they tell you not to wear them for the camera? Yeah, and I got my contacts. I just didn't put them in yet. So that's what happened. I did. I felt bad. I punished myself for that mentally. Yeah, I, I, I went one-on-one -on -one with me, and I said, that'll never happen again. Next on The Joe Schmo Show, Matt warns the Hutch. Dude, you're pissing people off. I'm just being honest. If you care about the money. I do. And later, the first eviction ceremony. One of you is about to say goodbye to high society and return to your sad existence, working for the man. Actors are often judged for their believability. Our actors had to pass this test every second of the day as they tried to keep Matt from discovering the truth. He pulled out my chair, and so I think he's warmed up to me a little bit, so I'm hoping that he and I are buddies so that when I turn on him, 
he's really shocked and freaked out. Molly, I guess you uh, like to pray before you eat? It was good that he did that because she, you know, she was just thinking, ooh, champagne. You know, she wasn't even thinking, oh yeah, that's right, I'm supposed to pray. The moment of silence was my suggestion. I don't pray, but I, I knew that she did. We all have a lot to be thankful yeah. for. Anyway. Yeah, for sure. Right. I'm not having masturbated in a while. What? <laughs> oh. The Hutch is going to cause some problems here, guaranteed. And I feel bad because he's already rubbing people the wrong way. And my stomach's getting tight already seeing like how, you know, he burps at the table, and I could see Molly getting a little bit upset. Uh, that feels good. <laughs> I'm like, I'm this guy now. I'm like the, the kind of annoying, obnoxious guy, and I'm, I'm sort of forming this picture for him, you know? He's taking all these impressions away. And so it's fun, it's like just to put that out there. We should go swimming after uh, lunch. I know. We have to wait have to like wait. 45 minutes. Why? Do. That's a wife's tale. Yeah. That's not true. Sometimes I eat in the pool. <laughs> Seriously, at the Four Seasons in Honolulu, they have a mini bar and a sushi bar in the pool. And you swim right up. That's fun. You eat right there. Wow, you've been all over the place. No. If you can go anywhere, where would you want to go? Fiji. Mm. Mm. They have these little huts in Fiji that go out over the water mm -hmm. and you live in them like over the water with mosquito nets and it's like the most romantic I think one of the sexiest places on the earth. I like the bottled water. She's very worldly, been to a lot of places. Yeah, has different experiences for me, you know, more of a you know, she's a traveler, a big city girl. Hip was telling me he doesn't know how to swim. So I'm, I'm, I'm proposing. It's not even that I don't know how to swim. I'm scared of like the deep end. So I'm just. I'm just proposing just wanna, okay. that we do some lessons if you want, yeah. and you well, can break through water. You know what? Yeah. I'm past the point where right. I'm not right. gonna make more. No, I played water polo. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're not gonna make more too. We've already planted in Matt's mind that I can't swim. We've said this several times, and the Hutch was like, "Dude, you know, I'll teach you how to swim." And I was like, I don't want anything to do with that, you know? And, and Matt's like, yeah, I have phobias too, man. I understand that. That's totally legitimate. So of course, now we're gonna just like, poof, push me in the pool and hopefully Matt will save, jump in to save me, my hero. <laughs> You're not gonna beat me, are you? Wanted to get a little swim in and saw such, Hutch was in there by himself and saw it as a good opportunity to kind of show him that no hard feelings with me, everything's cool. Dude, you're really lucky. You gotta tone it down just a notch. Why? I'm not doing anything. Dude, you're pissing people off. I'm just being honest. If you care about the money. I do. You're really pissing people off. You're he started giving me some advice just to relax. I gotta calm down. I can't start, I can't just try to provoke everyone. People don't like that. What comments do I make? I mean, I'm, I'm just being myself, dude. I know, I know that, but. <laughs> You know, whether it be about masturbate, you know what I mean? Like, whatever. You've not done nothing. I masturbate. You've done. You masturbate. Do you not masturbate? I do. I want to hear you say. I masturbate. All right. I can honestly say it just, it's just frustrating with Hutch sometimes because he crosses lines. Hey, you stay here. I, I want to talk to you. Next on The Joe Schmo Show. These are um, called therapy dolls. I call them my breakthrough buddies. I use these a lot in my sessions. Just don't touch them. And later... Please say hello to Tony. Imagine trying to fool someone who's sitting three feet away from you, watching your every expression and listening to your every word. So you broke up with your girlfriend? Before? She broke up with me. I'm sorry. I want to know before I start talking to you about my girlfriend. Oh, of course. You counsel right. me. I'm like, I want to make sure you're on the up and up. I play Dr. Pat, who is a very annoying marriage and family counselor. Um, I guess her job in the show is to sort of keep things light and calm um, in an annoying sort of way. <laughs> so I have to ask you this, and please, <laughs> I'm glad that no one else is around, but it's just. I mean, maybe I should wait, but I'll ask you. No, go ahead. You're a family and marriage counselor, mm -hmm. but yet you've been married three times. Yeah. Like, how do you justify that? Well, or you know, I immediately had to go through all of my husbands and, and why we 
got divorced and why it didn't work out, so it was very nerve-wracking. My first marriage, I was very young, and I married someone really young, and he was a car stereo installer, and it just, I got married too young. It's right. just the case of getting married too young. And I was left with no money, um, a broken heart. I mean, he was my first everything, if you know what I mean. I started taking classes at a college, and I took um, a psychology class. So I sort of went through all the three marriages, very much in a way where nothing was my fault. I fell in love with my teacher. Yeah, wow. which is a no-no. Um, and you know, but it happens. He was much older than I was. He was like 65. Holy shit. Yeah, smoke. I think it was sort of a father sort of thing. Okay. He took care of me and right. helped me through school and stuff. Um, and that didn't work out, just obviously for those reasons. I didn't know how he was going to take it. I really felt like this was one of those things where we're just jumping off a cliff and I hope we land on a soft place. Right. And my third husband, Walter, he, that one I thought was going to last. When, I, when you go through things, you can help people. Well, the first two, actually, all three, I mean, it's very logical. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Like, right. Your explanation is like, clear But I'm, gl I'm glad up, that you asked me, and you know, because I'm sure there are people will be rolling their eyes a little bit, but. She will explain those three marriages away perfectly, so it will not leave you wondering about her skills as a family marriage counselor, but really nice. I mean, and I feel comfortable talking to her. I think that he kind of fell for it because he's been opening up to me and, and talking to me and seeking advice, I think, subtly a little bit from Dr. Pat. Hi there, welcome. Good to see you all again. Take a seat. We asked each of you to bring a creature comfort item. This is a little piece of home that'll give us an idea about who you are. Ashley, why don't we start with you? These bracelets that I made. And I made them, yeah, for each of you guys. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> oh, I love them. Ashley made these wonderful bracelets, which, I mean, that's very thoughtful. In addition to her being hot, <laughs> she made the bracelets, so she upped her ante even more. Ashley, um, thanks a lot. Really, yeah, that's really nice. sweet. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous, like, that you would hand out bracelets to everyone but you know her strategy is keep everyone close to me from the beginning and be everyone's best friend we now have to add the other strategy of ashley in which is the conniving bitch that she is Ryan, i just i tie him what's yeah. your creature comfort item well um <laughs> i brought this gigantic thing i had the benefit of living in los angeles so when i was in college i made no money at all when i was in grad school i lived in this defunct um, frat house. Leave it to Brian to bring his creature comfort, a, a giant 150-pound doll named Albie. And then, you know, when we were mad, we'd, you know, we'd punch it or, you know, kick it or whatever. But you guys are welcome if you are... Let me are... say, let me be the first Yeah, if you lose your timber. Welcome, bro. <laughs> welcome. What's real. up? My creature comfort symbolizes, you know, how much I like my family and how much I like kids in general. Matt, why don't you uh, show us what you brought? Okay. This is actually my oldest nephew's Steeler ball. They live in Philly, so we bought him this ball to play with when he comes home. I was sitting in the chair one day watching television and they were going back to Philly. So my sister uh, had put Sam in the car and she's like, oh, you're playing with that ball. And I'm like, yeah, you know, she's like, do you like it? I'm like, I love it. And she's like, okay, well, bye, and gave me a hug. God, that's weird, why would she say that? So I'm sitting there watching TV and the phone rings and I'm like, hello? He peed on it. <laughs> I'm like, what? She's like, he peed on it. I'm oh, like, go! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's sweet. Patricia, why don't you go next? Oh, okay, Dr. Pat. I'm sorry, I keep doing that. Dr. Pat. Um, okay, this may look kind of funny. These are um, called therapy dolls. I call them my breakthrough buddies. I use these a lot with my um, in my sessions. The dolls, I mean, I think they represent her perfectly, Dr. Pat. She's just hope she doesn't want me to sit down and hash out some of my stuff because she doesn't want to know what comes out of here and here. If you want to use them, I'd be glad to work through some stuff with you if you want to talk to me with the dolls, but just don't touch them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so don't touch them? Yeah. <laughs> well, Hutch, I am dying to hear the story of your creature yeah. comfort item. All right. This is it. My friends call me the Hutch. Uh, this. 
is a, a night scope, night goggles. Oh, That's wow. Cool. This is for when the shit goes down. I felt bad, like he doesn't have anything to remind him of his family or his folks, but everyone comes from different circumstances, so maybe he doesn't want to be reminded of that. I'm watching everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching you, dude. <laughs> Gina, could you tell us about your creature um, comfort item? I use this basically to jot down my thoughts for the day, um, my impressions of people, and one of my favorite authors is Sung Tzu, The Art of War preparedness, things like that. I also have a tremendous amount of respect for Hatch from, Mr. Hatch from Survivor. I forgot his first name. I'd never seen Survivor until I started preparing for the Gina character. And I didn't know who Richard Hatch was, and I'm like, okay, but now he's my idol. I just think that it lends itself to Gina's personality, you know, very driven and seemingly organized. Earl, how about your creature comfort? <clears throat> Comfort was something my generation uh, grew up to live without, so I didn't bring anything. His stern nature forbids him from, you know, like, I don't need a creature comfort, you know? So, and I was a little bit, I'm not surprised, but I just felt a little bad. Like, he doesn't have to be that stern, you know? All right, Earl. Kip. Hi, everyone. I'm Kip. I do fashion design and things like that. Not, I don't get paid for that right now. I work in retail. Um, what I brought, is something sort of a pastime I do. Uh, I like to make scrapbooks and take pictures of like good times and memories. Cause you know, you always like do something really fun and then you're like, God, you know, I wish, wish I could look back and remember it, right? Kip speaks a little bit like a gay Scarface. If someone takes pictures, only take positivity. I don't want pictures of negativity. I only want pictures of positivity. <laughs> That's the only kind of memories I want to preserve in this book. And then by the end of it, we'll look back and you know, maybe I can make some copies or something like that. And then you know, we can look back and say, wow, you know? That's someone with a good heart and I make fun and stuff and he's gonna see this and hopefully laugh. But really, that, is, that really shows what kind of person he is. And I think we just have one left. Yay. <laughs> <Hi>. Okay. <laughs> uh, my creature comfort from home is a picture of my boyfriend, William. We've been together for six years now. We met at church camp. We were counselors in training. I was 16, he was 17, and we're saving ourselves for each other. So I know that's kind of strange nowadays, but. No, that's normal. <laughs> normal? Well, I mean, we counsel, we actually counsel. Um, no, I was kidding, no, I was kidding. <laughs> we counsel kids on abstinence. Cool. It's about What's his abstinence. Name? William. He's a looker. He's a. <laughs> Good job. That's great. Show and tell was a wonderful idea. I couldn't think of a better way to, you know, learn something more about a person. Smile. There you go. Yay. All right. I think you like the face I made, dude. Everyone went back to their rooms, and then I saw Molly's picture of her boyfriend, like, laying on the kitchen counter. Like, she hadn't grabbed it and taken it back to her room, and I, looked at it and I said, you know, Molly, there's a picture of your boyfriend's right there. And she goes, oh, is that where it is? And I thought like, wow, you mustn't care too much about it if you're just leaving it anywhere, you know? Oops. Uh, messed up. Messed up. Okay, everybody, let's prepare for the scene in the dining room. Someone in this room will see their dreams of $100,000 shattered into a million pieces. So enjoy this night, because for one of you, it'll be your last. It's like it has to be, it's not like, oh, are you excited to go on the show, or oh, this, it's like, well, why'd you do this to me? Yeah. Wait, did you have the phone on? Yeah, I do. By the end of the night, you're gonna be like, I think I transformed. You know, I was saying before, like, I really have no idea how, you know, men or women wear these things. Like, it's very, very uncomfortable. I don't know. It's like changing your medicine. It, like, it makes you sick for a little while, but then once you get used to it, it's like, oh, this is better. But, like, it's the same thing with his song. Kip is a gay Cuban American fashion designer, and uh, he's very flamboyant, and uh, he likes hanging out with the girls, which is convenient for me, the actor. <laughs> okay, it's our first, you know, 
the only experience? No, it's our first time, like, you and I are dating, and we come home, and I pull my pants off and have a thong on. Don't you think I'm like, what do you think of me? Gay. But see, I don't think. <laughs> you think I'm gay? No, I don't think you're gay. No. <laughs> I know, but you know what I mean? Like. Don't ask me. <laughs> not a lot of straight guys wear them. I haven't seen anybody okay. so, in the yeah, you okay. wear them. French guys do. Yeah. Italians. No, it many looks Italian too guys wear them. Some Germans. Strippers. Male strippers. Right. Well, but you you know, I'm talking about strippers? regular population. You know. And, and people that live on South Beach. You've uh, never seen a stripper? Anything? Female? Man. No. My character, Molly, she's a 22-year-old virgin, and she's just, she's kind of naive, and she really gets on my nerves. <laughs> so, I mean, I just, I feel bad for my other castmates to have to put up with, you know, Molly. Wow, you're missing out. I don't think so. You know? I'm you second that. I'm second that. Up, right? She's I, don't, I don't frequent strip clubs, but... They're fun. I've They're seen a fun. porn or two. They're fun. They are a good time. Yeah. I like going there. It's just fun, you know? Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's like, yeah. whatever. It's just like, it's yeah. crazy. Because exactly. it's like That's uninhibited. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. is, yeah. And it's fun watching the guys just go crazy. <laughs> you know, it's like... That's It's my favorite. When they think they have a chance with them, I'm like, please. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So, would it be boring if I, like, asked everybody what y'all do with the money? Just because I want to know, because I'm curious. That's not why I came here, honestly. Really? It's not like well, I, if, if he wins, I, Matt has to give me all the money. No, if then. I win, believe me, <laughs> getting that money guy. will change my place in life. I've, 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 I've slacked off a lot, and a lot of people my age are a lot ahead of me. But that's not why I came, uh -huh. wow. and that's the honest to God's truth. So why are you here? Why, why are you here? What is? Because I have nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody. Okay. Now that you all know each other a little bit better, it's time to get serious. This time tomorrow night, you're each going to be casting a vote to remove one of your fellow housemates from the game in our riches to rags eviction ceremony. Someone in this room will see their dreams of $100,000 shattered into a million pieces as they leave the lap of luxury and return to their no frills existence outside the walls of this mansion. So enjoy this night, because for one of you, it'll be your last. And when Ralph announced the eviction ceremony, uh, my only thought was, Hutch is a very nice guy, but I, I think he's gone. I really do. Earl and I are gonna take it as far as we can. Um, Dr. Pack, I think she's a more reserved person. And Brian, I, I don't even need to say a word to Brian. That guy is rock solid. I mean, I just really like him. And uh, Kip, as it stands right now, I'm someone he could feel comfortable with. I mean, Molly, on a superficial level, I mean, is built like a Playboy bunny, which, I love Playboy bunnies. If Ashley stays, then Ashley stays. I'll say it again. <laughs> Very attracted to her and, you know, would like to explore some possible options. And uh, Gina, you know, I'm gonna try to uh, get Gina on my side for a little while. Like, I don't think there's any way in the world Gina's gonna get voted off. My goal is to have it come down to Brian, Kip, Gina, Earl, and myself and then reassess at that point. If I snore, oh, you hear you snore? I don't know, I've never heard of <laughs> Coming up in the next hour of the Joe Schmo Show. Touch that hooker! Oh. <laughs> when Matt touches a topless hooker, he does the unthinkable. <gasps> And will Matt fall into a scheming trap? This is under Gina's bed. You were just having a bump across it? My flip-flops are right here. And the first riches to rags eviction ceremony. One of you is about to say goodbye to high society. Who will leave the mansion? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And it seemed really, really over the top. I was convinced that Matt was onto us. It's all up next on The Joe Schmo Show. 
Our unsuspecting hero, Matt Kennedy Gould, met our cast of fake reality show contestants. He stepped into the house and pulled Kip out of the closet. Hey, dude, I wanted to say, when I said you're gay before, don't get pissed. The actor playing Earl learned the hard way there are no second takes. Wait, which ones did you think were mine? You yeah, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I blew it. I blew it the first day within the first two hours. Matt tried to smooth the waters with Hutch, the asshole. Dude, you're pissing people off. I'm just being honest, if you care about the money. I do. He believed Gina, the schemer, was a smart strategist. One of my favorite authors is Sung Tzu, The Art of War. Nice. Now, Matt is locked away in his bedroom, sharing his thoughts in his daily interview. Meanwhile, the cast secretly sneaks away and meets with the director to plot out the day. Everybody here has been doing an amazing job. We had this guy fooled. Yesterday was a great day. It went, it went beautifully. It could all be over in 20 minutes. <laughs> Welcome to the prison that is our show. <laughs> now we've got to find opportunities to get all of our storylines going. Earl, go more strong silent. Ashley, I think more on dynasty high tone bitch. Molly, I think you've got to be sweeter as Molly. Kip, all you needed to do was bring up the comedy. Does yeah. anyone think they can do an impression of Matt? <laughs> uh, Gina, before lunch is served, we're going to pull you and Matt and leave you in the pool room. This is the first opportunity we're going to have for you to really talk about setting your strategy. Any other questions? Game on, yeah. guys. Game on. Game on. Game on. Game on. Know that we are doing a huge secret. Every day is as scary as the next. Gina and I somehow ended up in the pool room together. I saw it as a nice opportunity to kind of talk to Gina about maybe some strategy. <laughs> oh. Let me show you what strategy is all about, boy. Let me show you. <laughs> so what do you think about this game? I think it's insane. <laughs> But I, but Gina, I like you. I like you too. And I think that you can win. We need to talk. <laughs> I had this whole spiel to give him, to ally him with Gina's character, to ally Matt, so that it's Gina and Matt against the world. Like, I'm not playing you at all. Like, I, I, I told him in the confessional room. Yeah. Like, I think you got a good shot at winning, and so do I. Yeah, I, I'm getting the same feeling. I want to ride with you to the end. I'm not joking around. I think we can. I really feel like we could go under the radar, so to speak, because everyone so else is like, they're at camp. I was trying to plot with Matt, and literally everything I was about to say, he comes to me and says it. And he's like genuinely trying to form an alliance with Gina. Yeah. That's all we need. That's it. And we get rid of the rest of the people. That's it. That's it. Maybe this we hook up a little bit. No, <laughs> no, but first things first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, but you know what I mean. I'm so glad we're having this okay. conversation because I, I filmed this last night. All right, cool. Dude, it's on. After Gina and I were playing pool, I joined the others for lunch. A great, gosh, a great spread. That that's a high-priced meal and it looked good. And there was, you know, a smoked salmon. I don't eat salmon, but gosh, I thought. Now we've really made it, you know? Smoked salmon. I'm where I need to be, you know? Um, and there's flatulence. Hutch is explaining to me how he's going to take care of me if he and I were to hook up. Oh, yeah? I wanted to try to get Matt alone and try to get him to talk about the house, who he likes, who he doesn't like, and try to develop myself as more of the bitch. Ashley and I had a little bit of a physical connection. Like, she was kind of making a little bit of eyes at me. I'm sure, you know, she sees me, like, I know I'm a, a nice looking guy, but I also know, like, she probably thinks she can, you know, hook me a little bit and then, you know, toy me around. So yeah. I'm going to try to let her use me. <laughs> this is my goal. <laughs> Yeah. I think he's gonna go home tonight. I don't like it. Like, he makes you girls feel uncomfortable. Working, you sexy bitch! Yeah, he yeah. makes Kip feel uncomfortable. We all have a lot to be thankful for. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm not having masturbated in a while. What? <laughs> and like, since we're just starting out, we don't know what's gonna happen. I did have to relieve myself during my stay in the pool. I no. I really don't want to vote anyone off, but if I... No, but Ashley, you have to. I know. And 
Where are you going to start? Him. Who, I mean, is there anyone else you could think of? I don't like when people push their religion on me. Are you bad? I sort of think that she's a little bit of a nut job herself. I mean, I think Brian's normal. I think Gina, too, is pretty normal. I just think she's not as nice as she appears. Really? Yep. I think out of any of the girls, she's the one that would fucking stab you behind your back in a second. I'm just saying. That's what I think. You think so? Yeah. Ashley, by far, is the bitchiest of the cast. But, like, I kind of like girls who are bitchy like that. Like, know that they're nice looking and know that they have money and know that they've been places. Do you have brothers and sisters? Yeah. How many? Two brothers. Wow. <clears throat> so, I kind of goofed up because I'm an only child and I said something about having brothers, so then I had to make up this whole story about they're my stepbrothers. I don't really know them. Like, my parents yeah. were only married for a short, well, my dad, I never knew. So Your, your biological father? Right, so okay. this dad is my stepdad. Oh, okay. And his kids, I don't really feel like they're really my brothers. Oh, no? They don't, no. I have to go back and look at my stuff and write down what I just said to him so I don't mess up later. It's cool. Yeah. Did you see that hot tub up there? Yeah. It's a fireplace. There is? What, Cute. outside? Yeah, at night we could make a fire. Oh, man. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be real nice. Yeah. I need that. Yeah. I need that bad. If anyone here, I'd like to get to know Ashley, at least in terms of females. So we gotta get going. I mean, if we're going to use the hot tub, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got to go. No, I'm going to stay out here. Okay. I'll be back out. Okay. Relax. I am relaxed. You're acting like you have breasts. Next on The Joe Schmo Show, the little game we like to call Hands on a High-Priced Hooker. Oh! <laughs> Later, but for one of you, the vacation's over. Will Matt believe who gets voted out at the first Riches to Rags eviction ceremony? <laughs> I'm okay, I think we got the moment. We walked out to the game and I saw the table. I mean, it was just set up perfectly for a woman to lay on, you know? And uh, I was very excited. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I had a feeling you'd like this, Kip. <laughs> well, everybody, tonight is your very first Riches to Rags eviction ceremony, Woo! where one of you will be banished from the house. Now, before every eviction ceremony, we're going to give you a chance to save yourself with the Lord of the Manor Immunity Showdown. You will all be competing for this. I want it. This is our pimped out immunity robe. If you win the right to wear this, you cannot be evicted tonight for any reason. Now today's challenge will test your mental and physical stamina. It's a little game we like to call hands on a high priced hooker. Please say hello to Tawny. Someone is looking down on me. I love fake breasts, fake blondes. Um, maybe it's because like I can never have one. Um, so I'm always poor. I'm getting better. Uh, I am getting better. <laughs> well, you'll notice that Tawny has bills sticking out of her bikini. Normally, snatching dollars away from a hooker will get you a black eye. But tonight, it just might get you immunity. Yeah. <laughs> Each bill has a number on it. 
And that number determines what part of your body has to be in constant contact with Tawny's body. Oh, I'm so happy right now. You don't know. <laughs> the person who lasts with their hands on Tawny the longest becomes the first lord of the manor, wins the immunity robe, and is one step closer to $100,000. However, if you're the first one to let go of Tawny, you will spend the remainder of your stay in the laundry room. Shut what? Up. Oh, Keep that no. in mind. Hutch, yeah. you're up. I love it. And it was all set up so that it would be a battle of wills between Hutch and Matt at the end. Your crotch, Hutch, to Tawny's right hand. Okay. I'm freaking out. So I'm actually supposed to last the longest, and I'm in the hardest position. Matt, your turn. All right. right. Thank you. Do this for the team, dude. Tawny, I've been looking forward to this ever since you came out. So. <laughs> God, where should I choose? <laughs> I'm gonna need a so minute. Choices. I'm gonna need to look around. I delayed my pick for a little bit because uh, Tawny from behind is about as good a view as you can get. Yeah. Oh, I'm just not sure. You think there's a two drink minimum sure. for this kind of thing, Matt? <laughs> I love it. All right. I love it. <laughs> Oh, Matt, you're going to be very happy. Your left hand to Tawny's right breast. Brian, your chin to Tawny's forehead. Ashley, your left hand to the left inner thigh of Tawny. Gina, your right butt cheek to her left knee. Dr. Pat, your left nipple to her right knee. All right, Kip, your navel to Tawny's left shoulder. Earl. Your right ear to Tawny's navel. Molly, your right hand on Tawny's left breast. Oh! Oh! Can we trade? All righty. <laughs> I will now escort Tawny to her table. Come on, Tawny. Oh, my God. Oh. Tawny Roberts. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. You might tell my boys. Wait a minute. <laughs> I was surprised at how quickly Matt recognized Tony Roberts as an adult film star. He obviously had been a fan of her work previously to meeting her naked on the table. OK, everybody, gather around Tony and prepare to take your positions. You will be starting on my mark. And remember, there is no leaning on the hooker table. Ready, set, <clears throat> touch that hooker. Instantly, I felt the life come into me. <laughs> I was trying to think of different thoughts, you know, Rosie O'Donnell, <laughs> thinking about baseball games. I was, I, I pictured a guy hitting the ball, you know, and running around the bases, but when he got to home plate, there was Tawny <laughs> waiting for him, oiled up and ready. So it didn't work too well. How you doing, Molly? Shut up. How you feeling, Mal? It's an orange. You know, I was just kind of waiting to see if Molly was, you know, going to go full on with the game. I knew everyone else would stay a little bit. And she, I realized she was going to try to win immunity. And so I decided to just touch the breast, you know, you know, get that texture. <laughs> you know, this is honestly like a dream come true. Oh but, God. but I have to say, sharing that bed oh, oh, is ridiculous. And I won't do it another oh, night. Yeah. <gasps> Holy mackerel! You're you kidding me. Matt did the one thing nobody considered, and he let his hand off first, and that's when I almost had a heart attack. The initial shock you could do was palpable. You could feel everybody stiffen up. <gasps> Well, the second he did it, I just looked up at the producers and everyone was like, We all were shocked. Yeah. We didn't know I what know. to say. What red blooded American male is going to let go of a porn star's breast without having to be drug off? You You're are. kidding me. You what? are. Holy mackerel. Wow. What's wrong? I hate sharing the bed. And I get my own bed and I need my sleep. And I know you folks aren't voting me off tonight, right?
Next on the Joe Schmo Show. Don't be a jerk. What are you talking about? You're a slut. Look at you. And later, one of you is about to say goodbye to high society and return to your sad existence working for the man. Wow. What's wrong? I hate sharing the bed. I get my own bed and I need my sleep. And I know you folks aren't voting me off tonight, right? If you could see our faces, I mean, we're like, what do we do? Do we stand here for the next two hours? Hi. Girl. You know, my grandkids are going to be watching this. Yes, they're going to love you for this. Now it's been five minutes. minutes. Five minutes. He's out. Yes. He's out. Oh, I thought for sure you were going to last the longest. She couldn't get mad. Two down. Hey, I don't want that. Gina just let go. That's part of my plan. It's part of my plan. Gina. Sorry, Gina, but Gina, she said it's you know it's all part of the strategy. It's all part of the strategy. I remember her clearly saying that, and I thought, is it <laughs> really? You know what? I gotta get up. <laughs> what? I gotta get up. I, my leg was cramping. Dr. Pat is out. Have Have you ever done girl girl? It's actually considered lesbian act. <laughs> you are doing girl, girl, right? I now. am not doing girl, no. girl. That's hard. Yeah. This is girl on girl, girl softcore porn. You are doing softcore porn. I am not doing softcore porn. You are on Cinemax. That's pretty much it. Core. I'm doing porn. All right. Up a little bit. That's ten minutes. Ten minutes so far. You guys. Ten. Ten. Give me a high five. High five. You spit on her. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Molly, you are sinning. Think about it. You are sinning. You are. You are for money. Four the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are three minutes away from it, licking a vagina. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna call it. You dare. Don't. Do not. The size spit. matter. Hutchwood pretend to spit on my hand. He would kind of lean over and get a good loogie going, and it would kind of go down, and then he would suck it back in, and it would never hit me. Don't worry yeah, about it. No. Let that spit ride. No. You let that spit ride. I do not like bodily stuff on me. Do not He's do not it. allowed to spit It's on. illegal. If he uh, do not spit on me. He's not allowed to spit on you. He's, He's not, not going to. He's trying to psych you out. So now, gosh, the hutch is really giving everyone a hard time. I'll punch you. I'm, I can. Ah, ah, ah. Yes. Yes. She jerked and jerked off. No pun intended. <laughs> I caught it. I caught it. In I'm my just hand. asking. No. I will make a deal with the three of you guys. If none of you vote for me, if you promise, I will let go right now. Shoes are killing me. No. No, no Brian. Hmm, I wonder what we can find. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, you guys. You guys promised. I'm gonna let go. Nobody can yeah, that's vote for me. Horrible for your body, dude. I'm sorry. Brian is out. Yes. He's out. I'm going to win. Look at my position and look at yours. That's all I got to say. That is when I think the drama really began. Things seem to really start to get tense at this point. Don't be a jerk. What are you talking about? You're a slut. Look at you. Uh. You call yourself religious? You call yourself that you have beliefs? You don't have beliefs. I have beliefs. You're holding on to a hooker's boob, dude. Okay, will I get in trouble if I slap him? This guy is hard. Yes. yes. No contact. She can't touch me. Well, if I take my hand off her breast, no, then can I slap him? Hey, no, 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 hey, no. You've been no. on for 15 Come on. minutes, and what you're going to you let doing? him talk to, talk you into doing Jesus. that? Jesus. You're you 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 smarter than that. Your tit. Don't touch him. Think about it. You have any morals? You call yourself a moral person? You can You're doing this your for ears, money. You're doing you this for hundred thousand dollars. You're holding a hooker's breast. What are people gonna think back home? You gotta go live your life after this. I can't live. So go life. enjoy, live your life. They're gonna see you on national television. You think they're gonna edit this out? They're gonna fucking put this on. Number one. This is gonna be in the promo. This is gonna be on the advertisement. This is probably gonna be on the poster. Yeah. So enjoy. That's right. You, you talk. You don't have to do to me. You talk to him, dude. Uh. Oh, okay. Molly. Molly. Molly is out. You're like, man, it's being an asshole is tiring. Because um, I'm, I'm not like that in real life. I'm uh, extremely polite. Kip. What? Dude. If oh. you don't let go. No, <laughs> uh huh. Come on. I'm going to throw you in the freaking great. pool. It's great, though. Every opportunity I get. Don't even say that. I will, dude. You're not going to throw me in the pool because I, I can't will. swim. So he don't. Can't swim. You can't threaten okay. me like this. I have been threatening Kip about his swimming, that I would throw him in the pool. He better watch his back a bunch of times in front of Matt, and we made sure Matt saw that. You are not throwing him in the pool. I will whoop your ass if you throw him in the pool. Dude, I'm just playing the game. This is what the game, you have to step up to the plate. Okay. You want to win the money, you got to step up to the plate. Then you are... You know what, you know why? Aren't your legs tired? Yeah, That's... they're tired, dude, but you know what? I'm going to stick in there because I have fucking discipline, unlike you. 
You can't even take a swimming lesson, for Christ's sake. I don't want to... Learn how to swim. You're fucking 26, 27 years that. old. Dude. Jesus. Kip, if you, let mad, him in, if you let him in, I'm going to be real pissed. If you let him get to you like that, I'm going to be real upset. I don't think Hutch would dare say the things that he said to those people to me because I'm bigger than him and I'm badder than him. <laughs> hey, Kip! Kip! Watch don't even it. respond! Yeah, well, you got the mat man. He doesn't need to because he knows what's going to You got the mat man. I'm the sickest dude, the baddest dude here. There was a moment where he he looked like he was going to hit me if if I did anything to Kip. Kip, I'm going to break hey, you. Kip. I, I will ride you hey, to Kip. hell. I'm the devil, dude. Kip, will you listen to me? Will you listen to me for I'm one serious. second? I'm serious. Don't even look at him. Kip, will you listen to me for me. one second? I want you to look at me. I'm going to break you. It's, I will stand here it? for the next two days. Ear, Ask yourself. Here's what you, here you go. Let's look that way. Fine. You can look, but you can still hear. No, he can't. I don't, I don't respond good to this. I don't like this. For no! The next two, yes, I don't want to do this. Hey, Kip! Come on, come on. Kip! 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 This is too much pressure, guys. No, I don't want to do this anymore. You're, listen, you're gone, dude. Listen. You're already gone, so give it now. No, you're not. Oh, man. Yes! Oh. Yeah, that's why you almost fell. He Congratulations, Hutch! Whoa, what do you mean? The final person on Tawny's body was supposed to be on there for 10 seconds following the second to last person removing. I jumped up in celebration off the hooker. Matt instantly pointed out like, whoa. So I was like, oh God, you know, I quickly squatted back down onto my, my crotch onto her hand. But we just sort of pushed through it and they just like, Hutch wins, Hutch wins. No one brought it up. I wasn't gonna, certainly gonna do it though. You know, I did, Hutch was an easy vote for me. Um, but I really think that Kip won that game. Hutch. Bro. Not only have you enjoyed quality time with a quality lady, but you are the yeah. first Lord of the Manor. I'm immune, baby. I'm immune. Congratulations, dude. dude. I'm sorry. You I'm sorry to well. everyone. The Lord of the Manor immunity robe is quite pimp. I was envious not of the immunity yet, but just about how pimpy looked in it. Honey, you are exempt I'm from I'm eviction sorry, I, tonight, I need Hutch. A single bed Congratulations. <laughs> Until the next immunity showdown, you will not be able to be evicted Woo! from the house. Dude. The most important thing to me is just touching that right breast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to you, Hutch, but like, I want to win, but not badly enough to hurt people's feelings. Next on The Joe Schmo Show. This is under Gina's bed. You were just having to bump across it? My flip-flops are right here. I don't know if I can help you now. She was very odd at that point. And later, First vote for eviction from the mansion. I'm really kind of paranoid right now <clears throat> because Sheena's character supposedly has written naughty things about everyone else, all of the other characters, and basically someone's going to find it and show it to Matt and use it, try to use it to win Matt over and say, let's oust Gina. Should I find this now? Yeah. Okay, let's be down here. Yeah. Who is it? Come in. Hey. Close the door. I'm sorry. Dude, don't be sorry to me. You just got emotional, man. Don't feel bad. I just wanted to tell you something. Yeah. having to bump across it? My flip-flops are right here. They had found uh, her board, um, and on there she had everyone's name listed and, you know, things next to their name. Earl, nothing. B, Brian, weak. Hutch, dick, out. That's her vote. P, Pat, quack. A, Matt, wild card. Who's Mo? A Wally. I want the vote off the home office. Hold on. Um, come in. Close it up, close it up, close it up. 
The thing about it for me is, I just don't see why she would write that down, like, and not expect people to find it. Look at this. This is, this is um, um, Gina's board. And she's Gina's like, board. And she's like, look what she's writing. I don't know if we should be looking at this. Uh, well, she showed me earlier. I don't think. I, I, I know. I know. I, I just. I know. I'm guessing M.O. is Wait, me. Matt, is this wrong to do it? I'm should we, should we just not, me. should we put I'm it away? Simpleton? I don't even know. I'm not, I'm not making judgments or whatever. That, if, if she's dumb enough That's to leave that right there, then by all means. And but I'm caught on tape. I looked over and saw it. Yeah. You know, I just don't You're want right. any part well, of that. She told us, her, right. she told, told us before that she was writing on it, so. I know, I know. I didn't want to talk about it, so I left the room and got in the pool. And he pulled me aside and he was like, yo, you know, they found what you wrote about him and I, I really don't know how I can help you. You're in trouble. Okay, tell me what... You're in trouble. I had this really bad feeling. You know what we were talking don't about? Don't act like we're talking about anything. No, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just telling, but you know... They found that board under your bed. She was like, real dramatic, like, oh, well, we're, we'll work something out. And, like, kind of different than she normally is. I don't know if I can help you now. I know. I don't know if I can do it. I mean, believe me, I'm not going to put your name down, but... I know. That was... That was everything we were talking about. Boy, you know, how could that happen? Like, kind of, like, fake a little bit. Oh, man. Okay. How about this? I know some people are going to vote for me. But we... We don't want them to think there's any alliance or they're totally not going to let you say anything good about me. Because right now, I have to win favor in, in someone else's eyes. And she was very odd at that point. Very odd. OK. All right, G. I'll talk to you. Talk to you later. OK, we'll definitely talk. I thought that we set something nice up, but I'm starting to get an odd feeling that she's trying to play me a little bit. No, I didn't see you carry anything in when you come in. Yeah, I, I don't know what I did with it. And you don't, oh, have, there, you don't have a watch anyway. I made my move into the laundry room just before dinner and knew that I would be comfortable. I have my quilt from home and my Steeler Ball Creature Comfort, and I thought, this will be great. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> Earl, I know you don't want to do it, oh, little man. man. Don't hug me. I hate that. Jesus. It's cool. What? It's been real, it's been nice, but it ain't been real nice. <laughs> yeah, we'll miss you. Yes. Not that bad. A lot better than sharing a bed. I was happy to see the single bed, and I thought, this will be great. Next on The Joe Schmo Show, one of you is about to say goodbye to high society and return to your sad existence working for the man. When I was sitting down with my dinner, the taste of the dinner was great. Um, but the best part by far about the dinner, I uh, guess Kip had a surprise he wanted to give to everyone. I love. Um, impersonations. I want you guys to impersonate each other. <laughs> and, and whoever does it the best, um, in my eyes, um, wins a very special prize that I, can, I am allowed to give you. Wow. Can I go first? <laughs> yes, you can go first. <laughs> okay, let me, let me think of it. <clears throat> what, are you kidding me, man? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me, man. Sure <laughs> thing. Do you think that I don't like clothes? I love that bag. I love that bag. I love that shirt. At that moment, it like clicked in perfectly where I think I sounded like Tony Montana, but I really sounded gay as well. Now that's hot, hot, I have to forgive you. Hot, I have to forgive you because that, that's the way you play the game. And this is, who I am, and this is something that I have to deal with. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Molly.
<laughs> There's just a lot of love here tonight. We have a lot of love going on. Buck up. <laughs> I have a boyfriend named William, and I go to church. <laughs> this is not like it was in the Bahamas. <laughs> I have my own strategy. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, I was kind of afraid she wasn't going to take her jaws off. <laughs> you got me down pretty well. All right. Every time I look at Matt, and I think he's concentrating, this is my imitation of him. Yes. Concentration face. <laughs> ah, awesome. Oh, yeah. That is good great. Oh, I can't even touch I'm the ear. Flattered. Okay. That's funny. Well, uh, thank you very much for doing that. That was fun. That, that was, was fun. great. Oh, yes. That was. Yes. That's What's a good game. Treat? That's a What's cool game. Um, okay. Guy in here. Well, the person that I think should win because he was so nice to me today, but on top of that, you were so amazing oh. imitating me. I thought I was looking in a mirror. <laughs> But like a crazy funhouse mirror. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he wins. You win, Thank hands you. down. That was great. Thank because you. whoever impersonates me wins. Oh, <laughs> no, and the, 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 the prize is, and this is because I'm just a lonely out there, and I want to be around people. Oh, oh, my oh. Oh. I'm, I'm going to give up the, the you master You're going to give it up? What? From the oh. 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 Kip's contest was really a setup to finally get Matt alone in the master bedroom so we could keep a closer eye on him. Here I went, and one day from sharing a bed with Dr. Pat and Earl, to moving my stuff into the laundry room, to moving to the master suite, and I thought, this will be great. As we lined up for our first Riches to rag ceremony. You could cut a knife through the tension. It was high. Ashley even had me feel her pulse, and it was like pounding out of her skin. For the past two days, you've all enjoyed the good life in the lap of luxury. But for one of you, the vacation's over. That's right. One of you is about to say goodbye to high society and return to your sad existence, working for the man. This is the riches to rags eviction ceremony. You're all represented here with your very own lap of luxury collector's plate. Your plate, much like your situation here, is very fragile. As long as you remain in the game, your plate will remain whole. However, if you get the most eviction votes, your plate will be cast into the fireplace and shattered, along with your dreams for $100,000. Well then, it's time to cast your votes. Keep in mind, Hutch is wearing the immunity robe. You cannot vote for him. So choose wisely. Molly, we'll start with you. It was rigged, and we would write down the names of the person we were supposed to vote for, but we'd also have a little fun.
go collect the votes. My mind was locked in on what am I going to say when he accuses of, us of being actors. The energy between everyone was just, the tension level was super high. I think the vote is the most difficult part of that process. The votes have been collected and counted. Let's begin. The first vote for eviction from the mansion. Gina. The next vote. Molly. Gina. Matt. Two votes Gina, one vote Molly, one vote Matt. Gina. 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 Last vote, Gina. With seven out of the nine votes, Gina is cut off from the lap of luxury. Gina, before you go from riches to rags, please step forward, serve me your plate, and address the group. Well, it looks like this is how it's going to end. Um, I'm going to leave this show like I played this show. With a lot of self-respect, pride. <laughs> and I'd like for you all to know that <laughs> this is a house. And uh, houses have varmints. <laughs> the hierarchy of those varmints is snakes eat rats. Rats eat smaller rats, the small rats eat the little tiny rats, and the little teeny tiny rats. Okay, who can't eat anything else, they eat the cockroaches. And that's what this behavior is um, symbolizing to me. The mentality of cockroaches. Gina's speech, the parallels to that speech from Survivor are uncanny. I know that Gina follows Richard Hatch, so perhaps her subconscious kind of threw that into her mind. And if I saw any of you in an alley, writhing of pain. <laughs> and all I had to do to uh, counteract that poison, or maybe worse, that was making you writhe, I wouldn't do it, because this was, I can't lend myself to stupid behavior and people who can't appreciate things, and this was very stupid. And Gina, <laughs> it's time. The house is voted. That's fine. You didn't do anything to me. Oh, okay. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust, Gina, you're dead to us. Please leave. Can you get me out of here, please? How do I get out of here? Stupid door. Obviously, these evenings are going to be difficult. Probably more so as we continue. Can you stop me? I'm done. But there are eight of you now. You're all one step closer to $100,000. But it would probably still serve you well to think about what happened here tonight. Whatever that may mean to you. You've got a big day tomorrow. Let's get a good night's sleep. I'll see you all in the morning.
Matt was rolling his eyes during Gina's kind of over the top speech and we thought he was onto us. So I ran to the room and say, you know, try to smooth this over, figure out what's going on. Dude, first stop. I said, I stop, for Gina. stop, stop. My mind was locked in on what am I gonna say when he accuses us of being actors? Stop. Seven fucking votes, okay? Seven votes. I voted for her. Listen, listen to me. It was, there was a vote for Molly, a vote right. for me, and seven for her. Right. Well, who the fuck do you think Gina voted for? Gina's not allowed to vote Gina. Right. Gina fucking greased me. He was pissed off. Not that he thought we were actors, but because Gina had screwed him in the game. She greased me. Was and I knew today, she fucking, that was, hey, I mean, whatever. I guess I felt, I guess I made a bad judge of character. But I felt bad about voting for Molly. I think she's great. But it doesn't but matter. I didn't. Because it was I knew she wasn't going to lose. I can't believe that, that he was an onto us. I mean, I was positive we were through. All right, dude, I'm glad we got to talk. Take care, bro. <laughs> I'll see you, man. Gina, this is my opportunity to say goodbye to you. Uh, however, I'd like to change it to good riddance. Next time on The Joe Schmo Show. Who did this? Matt is caught in the middle. Certainly you don't think that I would have done that. Dr. Pat gets inside Matt's head. Can you give it some rhythm? <laughs> what can possibly have Matt gagging? What is going on? And everybody gets personal in the hot tub. He's such a teddy bear. Wow. Next time on The Joe Schmo Show.